I've come to the university's physics department to find out about research going on into one of nature's most versatile and fascinating subjects, diamonds. This is a high pressure, high temperature tetrahedral press and it can compress solid tetrahedrons containing a diamond from this size to this size. In fact, it's so powerful that iron oxide is needed to form a gasket to prevent the tetrahedron from flowing out. We can go up to about nine gigapascals and for temperatures we can go up to about 2,800 degrees C. Now by applying a pressure, it means that we can then heat treat the temperature of the diamond and get it really hot so that we can look at diffusion of samples inside the diamond. If you don't apply a high pressure, then when you heat treat a diamond, it will turn back to graphite. So you have to keep the pressure high so the diamond stays intact. You want to put a diamond in and hopefully you want to get a diamond out at the end. So where can you see your work leading? I can see these diamonds being used in terms of semiconductors because we can look at the diffusion of nitrogen and other species within the diamond and use them as semiconductors because diamonds have better electrical properties than silicon. This is just one of the experiments that the physics department's working on to fully understand the subtleties of diamonds. This is a Raman uh, Renishaw um, in via microscope. Um, we primarily use this for photoluminescence work. Uh, if you can imagine a sort of a pond with a series of stepping stones, um, the position of where those stepping stones are is uh, sort of analogous to uh, the defect levels that are in our samples. And we actually use a laser to sort of probe uh, our samples and find out where these defects levels are. This diamond has a very high concentration of what we call the negative nitrogen vacancy um, complex. Um, this is quite uh, interesting at the moment, is being used as possible application for quantum computing. So it's the defects and impurities that control the useful properties of diamonds. Now diamond synthesis has got to such a stage we can contemplate making tailored diamonds for specific applications. We begin to realise that the properties of diamonds are often controlled by minute concentrations of impurities or very few defects in the diamond structure. So we study those impurities and defects and see how we can use those to control the properties of diamonds in a whole variety of applications be that quantum computing, electronic power devices, or quantum information processing. Diamond is this superb material, you know, optically transparent, very hard, you know, the hardest material known to man, very high thermal conductivity. Electronically, the charge carriers travel through it much quicker than they do in other materials, say like silicon. So if you can bring all these properties together, you can make uh, a really technologically very useful material. But to do that, you've got to be able to synthesize material with reproducible properties those properties are controlled by the defects and the impurities. We study the defects and the impurities. So before, if you wanted diamonds with a certain property, you'd have to find them by luck, presumably, naturally. Exactly, you know, because then you'd take a run of mine, and you know, the classic example is diamond for radiation detectors. About one in every hundred diamonds mined has the potential to be a good radiation detector and out of those, maybe one in a thousand actually is a good radiation detector. But if you grow synthetic diamonds with controlled properties and controlled levels of defects, every time you can make a good radiation detector. So when you talk about diamonds, they've got some amazing properties. What other kind of things can they be used for? Diamond can be the ultimate window material, as in it's very hard, uh, chemically very inert and optically transparent. Uh, if you put specific defects in diamonds, uh, you can use these as potential light producing centers. So there's a recent experiment on using diamond single photon sources. So you can get a defect in diamond that will emit one photon at a time and you can use that for quantum information processing, cryptography. As if you send one photon, a known photon, you can tell if somebody's intercepting your signal. You can also um, make diamond power electronic devices because of the combination of properties, because of the high thermal conductivity and the high electrical breakdown strength diamond as a power device is potentially the ultimate power device. So you imagine you've got a train and the electronics on the train to down convert the power from the overhead lines to the electric motor, that's probably a ton of electronics you've got because the silicon electronics just can't handle the high powers, the high voltages and the high currents you need. Potentially with a diamond electronic device you could miniaturize that so it weighed a few kilograms. You could do all that power management electronics just with a simple little diamond device. Presumably back in those days silicon was a good deal cheaper than diamonds. We are at the beginning of this revolution where 
finally we're getting the material under control so we have real potential to make uh, devices, real devices, whether they be opti optoelectronic for quantum computing, high power devices for power management, or even diamond electrodes for electrochemistry where water treatment plants might utilize a diamond electronic device to do that. So that was a bit of a fall from grace, from a wealthy woman's ring finger to a sewage works. The diamond that's uh, in a ring utilizes some of the properties of diamond. It's wonderful optical properties, it's hardness so it doesn't get damaged, and it's sparkle. But there are so many more properties of diamond. It's high thermal conductivity, it's biocompatible, as in the, uh, it's not poisonous. You can coat hip joints with it so they're uh, very low friction joints and they never wore out, wear out. You can make radiation detectors that can go very uh, deep into the heart of a nuclear reactor to monitor what's going on. And the material is just so tough, it can survive and it can keep sending you back the signals and telling you uh, uh, about the environment, whereas no, where no other material can go.